Hello, Versus System people again. Uh, this is Boomy Steak. Um, I just want to thank again to everybody that sent some really, uh, you know, your kind of nice and kind words about the video and uh, my first one on Overwatch. And um, I wanted to create another one that focuses on the evil team within the uh, realm of Overwatch, which is Talon. So we're going to be talking about Talon today. Um, so we're going to kind of look into uh, what kind of abilities are they going to be bringing to the table, uh, so on and so forth, as we uh, kind of progress and look through the cards. Um, one thing I have to note um, is I did not, I realized I did not show you guys my locations, um, the cards I made for location. So I'll show you guys those and then we'll kind of get into the heat of it with talent. So um, I'm going to go through these relatively quickly. I have our first one is um, the Academy. Okay, so the Academy, of course, it's uh, Sanctum on Nepal. I just thought this was kind of perfect, just like the color scheme, everything like that. And the fact that this is a place where, you know, especially one of our main characters, Genji, actually went to learn and try to meditate. And the thing is, I think it's a perfect... Um, combination for Academy. If we can find a more eh, cartoonish looking version of it or a comic book uh, looking version, I would be much more interested in that. So if you guys do have any uh, kind of artwork and things like that from this um, map, that'd be awesome. So that's Academy. Um, next, going down in alphabetical order, we have Earth. Now Earth had decided to take this image from Horizon Looter Colony from the attacker spawn. Um, of course, you get one humanity from using this. Um, and you can be used by anybody. So one thing um, I'm going to add to it as well is I may make an extended art card with that beautiful image uh, from Recall, the animated short, where Dr. Harold, Harold Winston is holding Winston's hand as they are silhouetted over um, over the earth. Uh, so I want to kind of like have that as like an extended art card. I thought that'd be kind of cool. Um, so that's what I have for Earth. And of course, for Talon, we have Fortress that gives you one might uh, and a green. And of course, going along with the kind of uh, theme that's been going on within all of the kind of uh, Marvel Comics um, sort of locations, having the Fortress being like a castle and we have the Chateau Guillard um, from, um, from Overwatch. Now, one cool thing, again, again, that like, you know, the color scheme of things, the green jump pads, guys, green jump pads, green, come on. Um, it's already made for this card game. Um, and continuing on, I have uh, going from Fortress, we're going to shift over to Laboratory. Laboratory gives one energy. I had it as the lab, uh, Winston's Laboratory inside Washpoint Gibraltar. Thought that kind of... Uh, you know, was appropriate towards what was going on. And um, yeah, so I thought that was kind of, you know, you can see all the tinkering and things that he's been doing, his jump pack and all that fun stuff. Next. We have the training ground. So going in the, into this as well, I had a hard time trying to find places where the Overwatch team would have trained. Um, there's the practice range, which is pretty, you know, pretty popular. Um, but I, I wanted to have something that would have been a map that we would have played on. And I decided to use the mecha base from Bus uh, Busan as the training ground that these people can actually be training in. So obviously this can change 100%, um, but I decided to use that image for training ground. Um, next, let's go to the special locations. So the special location we missed out on from Overwatch was Watchpoint Gibraltar. I decided to use this image. Yet again, a lot of this stuff will change if I find better images, or if you guys want to share some with me, I'd be more than happy to switch it. Um, obviously, this is a special location, which means it's like a wild, and it's only for people from Overwatch, and it pays for a energy, humanity, intellect, or might for an Overwatch character, okay? So, the, you know, these are some things that we can uh, see here from this special location, as well as you can see the four main power symbols that will be used on Overwatch characters. So, as you guys may have noticed from the last episode, there's no um, greens on Overwatch characters, and that's primarily for this reason, so that I can try to 
get that humanity in there um, as well as the other few things um, all right so that is the rest of the stuff from that but now we're going to be talking about the new team I'm talking about today that is Talon and Talon has Talon headquarters um, I took this from the Masquerade comic book and you can see energy or intellect or might or skill for a Talon character on your side so um, I don't even know why I added on your side but whatever um, but the thing is going into this is that um, I tried to find some sort of way for Talon headquarters they said the headquarters is in Rome from multiple sources that I've been looking into but I couldn't find any actual artwork from the area so I saw this board meeting going on so I thought ah, why not have this be Talon headquarters okay so those are the locations um, and now as we kind of continue on, let's go to the main characters on the Talon team. Um, and let's talk about the first one that I want to discuss for today, and that is going to be Mr. Doomfist. Uh, Doomfist is going to have a few things um, kind of added and changed as we kind of go along with this. Um, but this is the Doomfist main character card. Uh, he's from Talon. He has five attack, one defense with six health. He has a new keyword that I added called aggressive. Doomfist has ferocious on your turn. So basically he does not have ferocious on enemy players turns, which makes sense um, because in the game, you know, he's pretty much, if he's not moving and attacking and moving and attacking, um, he's going to be very uh, open to any other attacks from other characters, um, which is why I gave him the durable keyword power. Durable, yet again, just a reminder, means he cannot be stunned outside of combat and gain a wound. So when he would get stunned outside of combat, he gets stunned and he can recover um, like, like anyone with tough, but he does not gain a wound. So he can only gain wounds in combat, um, which I think makes him very, uh, very powerful. Because the thing is that anyone that has like put minus, minus one counters on people, you can just keep playing it on Doomfist, and he's going to just continuously recover. And he has the successor uh, level up for 3 XP. When Doomfist recovers, he gains an XP. So, yeah, if your friends want to put minus and minus one counters on Doomfist, he'll recover as durable, and you'll keep gaining XP on your opponent's turn, but as well as you might gain XP on your own turn, right? Um, so things that those are just some things to kind of be... Uh, kind of be looking into but remember durable he can only recover if he got stunned outside of combat if he got stunned inside of combat he still is face down um but when he recovers he gains an xp so it's either like hey you uh get stunned on your turn or something like that or an opponent's turn you recover you get three xp three turns you're level two doomfest or if your opponent is just really dumb uh and he's trying to throw a whole bunch of minus and minus one counters on you uh, and on people on your side, and then he keeps recovering on your opponent's turn, he keeps gaining XP, and he might show up on, you know, your opponent's second turn. You never know. Um, but yeah, so the successor, 3 XP, mostly because he's the third in line. I believe it's like the Scourge, the Savior, and then there's like the, uh, the successor, who is this version of Doomfist. So the thing is that there's three versions of Doomfist, you know, three kind of going into successors, um, so some cool things um, when he goes to level 2 I changed up the artwork a little bit to show his actual Doomfist gauntlet and I'm going to kind of explain how a lot of this stuff works um, he becomes a 7-1 with 6 health of course with Talon then he has aggressive still he has durable and now he has concussive when Doomfist strikes an enemy defender you may move that character to their back row so concussive is another keyword power I decided to add to this uh, sure craziness. Uh, and then the current Doomfist. When Doomfist reaches level 2, you can search your deck for a Doomfist gauntlet equipment and equip it to Doomfist. So it's when he turns into level 2 Doom, Doomfist, you can find a Doomfist gauntlet equipment and equip it to him. Okay. Um, so a few things of note with this. Um, Obviously, this may seem like super duper powerful. I understand durable on a main character is kind of scary, but he does only have one defense. So on your turn, you're going to be able to knock him down, knock him down with range attackers. Okay, 
So unless he gets something that he can equip to him or something like that to stop that, that's kind of what's going to be kind of playing out here. Um, so yeah, so that's Doomfist. I thought that was uh, pretty good. I think you know he's a pretty good uh, main character. I might like we might have to up the health total to seven. You, you never know. Um, durable may actually end up being super good for him. You never know. Um, so what does it mean to get that Doomfist Gauntlet? What is the Doomfist Gauntlet? Well, the thing is that the Doomfist Gauntlet is an equipment for Talon. Um, and very much like the Infinity Gauntlet, right? But the Doomfist Gauntlet is, um, uh, it's got some, you know, unique abilities here. Um, so it has Rocket Punch. So during the main phase, you can pay a green. Equipped character gets plus five, plus zero, ferocious, and can make a melee attack from your back row the next time it attacks this turn. So the idea is that because he like lunges forward with rocket punch, right? The idea is that you can make a melee attack from your back row, get plus five attack and ferocious with the payment of a green with this ability. Uh, then it also has the knockback keyword. When equipped character strikes a back row enemy defender and there is a face up location in their resource row, stun that defender. Okay, so the idea is that if they are just going to strike you and they basically get knocked back into their resource row, they can get knocked back into a location in their back row. Just like in the game, they would get hit and they would get stunned. So the idea behind this is that you can actually, uh, because you have Ferocious, you can pay a green, gain Ferocious, right? Strike a back row character before they strike back at you and then be able to take them out. It gives them plus five. Um, so on... A, a level two Doomfist that would be a 12 attack. Um, that may be too powerful. Uh, you guys can let me know. Um, but 12 attack with a green and he can strike from his back row. So you can strike from the back row and hit somebody in their back row if they have no one obviously in their front row. Knock someone in their back row into a location and stun that defender. So let's say you have like a big like huge eight drop, nine drop, you know, whatever. You may have Captain Universe in your back row, right? Who, who knows? You have them in your back row. He can punch him into the back and stun them. So the thing is, it could take him out um, right then and there. So it could be very powerful, uh, but you do have to pay the green to get the attack boost. But if you put this on someone else, like if you put this on like a... Uh, um, um, like I'm thinking of Fing Fang Foom or something like that, and they just go into your into their back row and hit everybody in that row. Um, oof, it could be it could be too powerful. Um, but we'll have to see kind of like how that plays out. Um, but yeah, really cool equipment uh, from uh, from Talon here that I decided to add to the game. So continuing on with uh, main characters. We're going to shift into one that goes back and forth between some teams, and that is going to be Gabriel Reyes. Now, Gabriel Reyes, um, so this is a level one Overwatch character. Um, I got this from the Retribution, um, whatchamacallit, the Retribution uh, comic. He has three attack, four defense with five health. Mission at all costs. Main, you pay a yellow. Characters on your side have violent this turn. I am not the one with the statue. Um, level up power, 4 XP. Whenever another character on your side KOs an enemy character, Gabriel Reyes gains an XP. When Gabriel Reyes levels up, he transforms into Reaper level 2. Okay? So here's the thing here. Um, mission at all costs. Characters on your side having violent is very powerful. So I was like, alright, this is very powerful. So that means he's a 6-4 level 1 main character with a yellow. Um... Pretty powerful. Yes, he doesn't have range or flight, but other characters on your side may. Um, and if you put them in your front row and you have a whole bunch of back row range attackers, they all double their attack against your opponent. It could be very powerful. So um, that's why I gave him the five health. Like just primarily because of the fact that he can deal lots of damage. Um, I'm not the one with the statue. It's just a flavor thing because him and Jack Morrison really just had this big. Uh, rivalry, and that's actually an actual quote from Reaper saying, I, I'm not the one with the statue because Jack Morrison ends up being the one glorified as the hero of Overwatch, the leader, as Gabriel Reyes was the leader of the Black Ops group called Black Watch. Um, 
which was kind of like the undercover sort of group that, you know, did the nasty things that they didn't want people to know that Overwatch was doing. So he was kind of like the underground guy. But of course, he starts to switch sides as time goes on. And we're going to look at our Reaper level two. So level two Reaper, um, of course, still on the Talon team, uh, main character. He has seven attack, five defense now with five health. And he has the Reaping. After, K after Reaper KOs an enemy character, heal a wound from Reaper. Okay, so this goes along with the fact that how he deals damage to characters, he would gain um, plus one, plus one, con uh, not plus one, sorry, he would gain health uh, in Overwatch, and how that was actually a big con uh, concern in Overwatch, even going into today, uh, was keeping the balance there. Um, so yeah, we have the Reaping, we have all this fun stuff with that. Uh, Wraith Form uh, is one of his abilities in the game. Any turn of combat, you can pay a blue, and Reaper can't strike or be struck this combat. So you can cancel combats, keep him alive, on top of that, heal wounds from him after he KOs enemy characters. This guy could be pretty devastating. Uh, the fact that how his level 1 can double all these you know, uh, bonuses and all that sort of stuff onto people, and on top of that, having a level 2, that can be very devastating as well. So I think Reaper at level 2, I think keeping him at 5 health is fair. Okay, I think that's pretty fair considering uh, all things considered. Um, but uh, but yeah, so that's kind of how I see um, this character. I think it, it's pretty well, uh, good flavor, everything like that. And this is actually some uh, artwork I found. I do not think this is official artwork. This is fan artwork. So I just have to give kudos to those that created this so I can uh, put it into, uh, into the game. So that's Gabriel Reyes and Doomfist. Let's take a look at the next one that we're going to discuss, which is Widowmaker. Uh, Widowmaker, I added a mechanic in here. You guys can let me know what you guys think about it, if it could be improved or things that can change. Um, so first things first with Widowmaker. She has Venom Mine, okay? During the main phase... Uh, oh, also, sorry. She's got range, 3 attack, 4 defense, 5 health. And then she has Venom Mine... Superpower during the main phase, pay a red. Place a Venom Mine counter onto a face-up enemy location in the enemy resource row. When an enemy character on that side flips that location face down to use a power, put minus one, minus one counters onto that character equal to their cost. An enemy player may pay a blue to remove the Venom Mine counter. Okay, so the idea behind this is that just like in the game, you can hide the Venom Mine counter behind a wall or on the other side of a doorway or something like that. So when someone walks by it, they would actually get attacked and they would you know, start losing health over time. So the thing is behind this is that I wanted it to be placed onto a location. So you can shoot, it's like you're shooting the Venom Mine across onto the enemy side, onto a location on their side. And whoever goes to it, which is someone that is using the superpower, they would visit that location to get that power symbol. Once they go there, they actually become weakened. Um, and I always like abilities that forces the enemy player to have to pay a resource. Like anything that forces the enemy player to have to, you know, use a power symbol to stop something from happening, I really enjoy. So having this on, uh, on Widowmaker, I think is really fun. Uh, she has range. She's got three attack, four defense. You may be thinking, well, hang on, she's a sniper. Like what's going on? I like to think that she's using her machine gun or submachine gun, um, Cap uh, capability with her uh, with her rifle. So I think like, right now she's using her submachine gun sort of thing, all that fun stuff, um, and she has the range, but she hasn't gotten that sniper kind of mechanic out yet. Oh, did that sting? Oh, yeah. You gotta love those uh, quotes and lines from Overwatch. Level up 9 XP. At the start of your turn, Widowmaker gains XP equal to the number of minus one, minus one counters on enemy characters. Okay. So the thing is that, you know, you're definitely going to want to have a lot of, um, what you might call it, um, a lot of characters on your opponent's side that get minus one, minus one. So there are going to be some supporting characters that you're going to see in this that you're probably going to be like, oh, I'm definitely going to... Um, uh, whatchamacallit, I'm definitely going to use that in order to um, 
you know, I'm going to put that into a Widowmaker deck in order to ensure the key point minus and minus ones out there. Especially soldiers. Like Hydra soldiers, things like that may work well with the Widowmaker deck because they're just going to keep throwing minus and minus ones out and gaining her XP. All right. Uh, yeah, so you can throw a bunch of Venom Mines out, do that, have some fun with that. But then when she becomes level 2, she takes out the Sniper Rifle. Okay. She becomes an. Uh, uh, she still retains range with 8 4, 8 attack, 4 defense. With five health, she has a superpower called Grappling Hook. Now, during the build phase, you can pay a red. Widowmaker has Climb and Quick Draw this turn. So, some of you guys may be wondering, why are you doing this during the build phase? Well, the whole aspect of Climb is that it has to be done at the start of the main phase. So, and I know with main phase superpowers, that could take place like after the start of the main phase takes place. So to ensure that doesn't, you know, doesn't happen, uh, I decided to do it during the build phase, you pay a red, and she gets climb and quick draw that turn, okay? Um, so climb meaning that she can exhaust the location and put a plus one, plus one on her at the start of the main phase. And then quick draw meaning she, when she range attacks, people with range can't strike back at her because she's actually legitimately firing before they can do it. It's like ferocious, but with people with range. Um, and she has the sniper keyword power. So she, uh, Waymaker can range attack back row characters even while they're protected. So pretty darn powerful. Okay. Um, pretty darn powerful. Um, so that's kind of like what goes along with this. So she is like a really like much better, um, winter soldier. <laughs> winter soldier, I believe had to pay a red in order to gain sniper um but she just has it um and she has that five health so uh yeah widowmaker um pretty powerful i really like her um in attack for defense when someone with range i think is great and the fact that she has quick draw i think allows the five health pool to be okay uh in this regard so venom mine uh, at level one keep throwing minus and minus ones out and then level two gaining the sniper capability um, pretty good. So the next one is going to be quite interesting for main characters here, guys. Uh, we have Moira. Um, Moira level one. So I've been going through a lot of different kind of tweaks of her, but this is kind of what I have of Moira so far. So she's from Talon. She's got two attack, five defense, five health. Okay. So Doomfist is technically the only one with six health in this, uh, in this group. She has Biotic Grasp. Okay, during combat, you can pay a blue. If Moira would strike a defender in melee combat, put minus one, minus one counters equal to her attack on that defender instead. Okay, um, so that's kind of a neat, neat aspect. So basically, by paying a blue in your melee combat, you can put two minus one, minus ones on somebody. The other ability she has for Biotic Grasp is any turn of any combat, um, pay a blue. The defending character on your side gets plus one, plus one counters on them equal to Moira's attack. So that even includes herself. So even if she's getting attacked, she can pay a blue to give herself two plus one, plus ones um, on her side. So the idea is that, yes, in defense, you get two plus one, plus ones. In melee combat, you can get uh, two minus one, minus ones onto your opponent. So that's all about Moira, right? She heals, she deals damage, she has the two hands that deal two different things. So that's why Biotic Grasp has these two unique uh, abilities. <laughs> Sorry, uh, two unique abilities here. Then she has the level up power, science will reveal the truth. Level, level up six XP when another character gains one or more plus and plus one or minus and minus one counters, Moira gains an XP. Um, Um, so going into this she would become a level 2 Moira at this time um, so pretty cool so obviously this this is also basically both of these abilities can give, give her um, XP so you have to use it three you have to use them like six times right in order to do it but the idea is that you would have other characters in your deck that would add plus and plus ones or minus and minus ones onto characters onto your side. Next one is level two Moira main character. 
Um, she's still Talon. Now she has range with four attack, six defense. She has the Biotic Orbs ability. So during the main phase, you pay a red. Okay. Choose an enemy row. At the end of each turn, place a minus and minus one counter on each uh, enemy characters in that row. Okay. So the idea behind this is that this power maintains as long as she is face up on your side. Once she goes face down, then, of course, this ability gets canceled. So the thing is that she, uh, this ability continues to go on until she uh, goes face down on your side. During the main phase, you can also pay a red. Choose a row on your side. At the start of each turn, place a plus and plus encounter on each character in that row. Okay. Um, so the kind of cool thing is that at the start of your opponent's next turn, you get plus and plus ones on there. At the you know start of your next turn, you get plus and plus one. So she is really good for counter generation, um, and uh, yeah, so pretty freaking cool. Um, so I really think this this is really powerful on level two. Hence why she's like a four six two uh, level two main character with five health. She's just super powerful. I think this is really good. Obviously, if they have a, a dagger on their side, that's going to cancel all this. If they have anything else on their side. So those are some things that you might have to be concerned about. So maybe that's why you'll try to buff your characters up to be able to wipe out their, you know, their rows as well. So the big key behind this is to keep this balance. As you notice that the biotic orbs at the end of each turn. So when you use this at the end of your turn, you're playing, you're weakening your opponent. But then it goes to your opponent's turn, right? And they can do whatever they want to put minus and minus ones, do whatever, whatever they want there uh, to remove those counters. Then during the main phase on your turn, it's at the start. So that means that you don't put them on right then and there. You have to wait till the start of the, your opponent's turn until you get the plus one plus one. So I think the timing keeps it balanced. I might have to change this to end of the turn, um, but we'll yeah we'll see what happens. Uh, so let's go to her uh, level two level up ability, level up power. That changes my thinking. Level up three XP. When an enemy character removes minus one minus one counters from itself, Moira gains an XP. So that even includes, right, when it gets stunned, you remove the counters. So when you stun opponent care, opponent, uh, sorry, opposing characters, enemy characters, they give you XP. So the XP number might go up here uh, based on that, you know, that whole thing. Uh, but basically, when an enemy character removes minus and minus from counters from itself, Moira gains an XP. So whenever it does, right? It doesn't have to be in combat. It doesn't have to be anything like that. Whenever it removes minus and minus from counters from itself, she gains an XP. So that's something to, you know, kind of look into uh, with this ability. But um, I kind of like that. I kind of like that flavor. And then finally, she has Coalescence. So she goes level 3 Moira. Uh, she has range, 6 attack, 10 defense. Um, I might make that 6-8, we'll kind of look into it, with 6 health. And then she has Coalescence. During the main phase, you pay a green. Double the plus one, plus one counters on characters on your side. Double the minus one, minus one counters on enemy characters. So basically, you pay a green and you double the guys on your side, double them on the opposing side. That, this can be very powerful. Um, so you just buff your guys up, deal damage to them. And that's the whole deal with Coalescence, right? You're dealing damage as you're healing through that beam that she shoots out. So, of course, I would definitely get some better artwork and things like that once I can find it um, for Coalescence and all that fun stuff. But those are the main characters for Talon. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys think that there needs to be some changes or tweaks and things like that to these um, as we kind of progress through. So uh, moving on, I have, um, let's look at level one characters. I'm still working on my level one um, Moira, but I guess I'll show you guys what she looks like right now. So level one Moira, I'm going to do the biotic orbs, but instead of rows, it's going to be uh, one character. So the thing is a biotic orb here, she's going to be able to put it on to, um, at the end of each turn, you can place a minus one counter on that character. Um, 
And then for the other ability, you can pay a blue and you can put a biotic orb onto um, a supporting character on your side and they get a plus one plus one counter each turn. So kind of similar to like Professor Xavier with his like mental, I think it was like mental domination or whatever it was that he had. Um, you are able to do this, um, you know, go going from like one character to like one row as the main character. So yeah, so that's level one Moira. Then we have um, Talon, 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 Talon Trooper. Okay, so we have the Talon Trooper, um, very similar to the Hydra Soldiers. As you guys have noticed, like, yeah, there's a lot of, like, these generic red shirts on the Talon team that kind of join in and help them. Um, and they all have these different specialized units that we'll look into. Um, but yeah. So this one I kind of took from here. Obviously, you know, once I'm able to remove this bubble here, that will be a little bit better. But you know, for the most part, you can tell us this comes right from the, uh, I believe this comes from the um, the train robbery comic, something like that. I don't know if it's called train robbery. It's, it's called train something with McCree. Um, as they're kind of, you know, jumping into the hyper train here. But very much exactly like the same stats and everything as Hydra soldiers. It's just their talent. That's basically the only big difference. Okay, so uh, those were our one drops. Our two drops are quite interesting. Um, I might change this to a higher drop, but you guys can let me know what you think. But Viali here. Um, Viali is actually was in the Masquerade comic. He was like the leader of Talon while Doomfist was in prison. So he's the one that was kind of running the show of things while Doomfist was kind of doing his own thing in prison. And... He has a few uh, things. So he has one attack, five defense, one health. Um, he has the keyword power. It has never been anything personal. You may discard Viali to regenerate a power symbol for one of Doomfist's superpowers. And then he goes, Talon is going in a different direction, which is basically which was one of his abilities. At the start of your build phase, you gain recruit points equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on characters on your side. Okay, so he may actually be really good on Moira deck. So Moira will keep putting plus and plus ones onto characters on your side, and you gain additional recruit points on top of that. This could be very, very powerful. This is where things with this card could be a little too much. Um, so I might have to think about making him a higher drop character or something like that. Um, but I know a lot of people at lower drop cards like gaining more recruit points for later on. This may be a little too much. Um, I was also thinking instead of the plus one plus one counters, that basically you get the recruit points. Um, you get additional recruit points equal to the recruit points of your opponents. So you get them to equal to number of cards in your opponent's resource row. So you get like your opponent's recruit points on top of your own, which can even be more powerful. You never know. Um, but yeah, those are just some things that I kind of uh, was playing along with this card. It's never been anything uh, personal. It was kind of funny because, like, in the comic, Doomfist throws him over a bridge or something like that. So it's kind of funny. So that's why I thought I'd add that in there. Um, <laughs> so he basically, like, literally him throwing over the bridge gave, gave Doomfist power. So, um, you know, over Talon. So I thought it was kind of neat how he uh, um, kind of plays a role into this. Uh, the next card we're going to look into, it's actually, uh, the image is not from a comic, which kind of bums me out, but hopefully if you guys have artwork of this guy, let me know. And that is Antonio. Antonio um, from the Retribution Cinematic uh, that actually Gabriel Reyes kills. Um, he has two attack, four defense with one health, and he has Talon Arms Dealer. You may pay one less to equip a Talon Equipment onto a character on your side. So um, so that's kind of pretty good. I, I think that's pretty good. Uh, so even the Doomfist Gauntlet can be brought up for one less um, and stuff like that. So I think that's a pretty good uh, pretty good card, especially if you have a Doomfist deck, you might want to bring them out. Or a deck where they rely heavily on equipment cards and Antonio might be able to help you out with that. So those are our two drops. Um, which, oh, okay, one three drop I find quite fun is um, Mr. Mauga. Okay, so Mauga being from, or Mauga, I, I gotta remember. So he's from Baptiste's kind of origin story comic and things like that. 
Um, he actually worked alongside him. I consider him like Talon's Reinhardt. Um, he's like this big, brutish guy. And you can kind of see how that plays out here. Uh, so he's a three drop with five attack, six defense. So pretty good, right? So any three drop that has like six defense is pretty great. I think like Sith is a three drop from the A Force. We had to pay like a green to bring her out. Um, so this guy comes out, he's five, six. And he's got two health pretty good he has a keyword ability called big dumb brute when Malga is in melee combat with an enemy defender an enemy player may pay a intellect if they do Malga is minus two minus two this combat okay because he's a big dumb brute and he even acknowledges that himself you keep me alive and i'll protect you no one stands a chance okay that's a quote he gives to baptiste in the uh, in his origin comics so some cool flavor with this card, some some fun things, but just a big brutish guy that comes out and yet again forces your opponent to pay locations. So another thing I really like about this card. So going from three drops, let's move on to four drops. Okay, um, here for a four drop, I have Maximilian. Maximilian, um, supporting character. Uh, so we have four four drop. Zero attack, six defense with one health. He has wealthy, the wealthy keyword power. So at the start of your build phase, you gain a recruit point. So obviously working well with in tandem with Viali to bring guys out on your side. He also has benefactor. At the start of your main phase, put a plus one, plus one counter on up to two talent supporting characters on your side. Okay. So the thing is that he can actually just keep giving your guys buffs and boosts. But as well as works well with in tandem with Viali, right? So Viali gains recruit points for plus one plus ones. Maximilian comes out and adds those plus one plus ones. So in ga gaining more recruit points. So the thing is that you can like bring you you might even have like twenty recruit points at one point uh, with with Talon. So I, I guess you can say that's like Talon's big thing is bringing out as many people as possible. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, the Talon four drop Maximilian. Um, any other four drops for Talon? Let's find out here. Any other four drops? Four drops. Uh, oh, yes, of course. We can't forget this one. So Talon also has Sombra, okay, um, who has range, three attack, six defense with one health. She has the hack keyword power. So when Sombra appears, choose an enemy character. It loses and can't gain keyword and superpowers until Sombra gets stunned or leaves play. Here you go, Cosmo. Here's the card that redeems this ability um, and brings it back. Uh, Sombra is 100% just like that nullify ability from Cosmo. But I thought if I had her as a higher drop, then that would make her a little bit, you know, a little bit um, more balanced. So she comes out, she takes away keyword and superpowers from your opponents. You have cards that build up that ramp ability so you can bring out more and more cards out onto your side that's possible. Um, lots of crazy things going on with this. But yeah, Sombra, um, I think really good. Three attack, six defense, one health. But as you've noticed so far, there is a lot of characters in Talon with just one health. But the thing is that you can bring out a whole bunch of them out onto your side. So... Um, could be very useful, maybe uh, a little too overpowered, but you know, we'll see. Uh, next is our five drops. Uh, first five drop I'll talk about is um, Sanjay. Uh, Sanjay Corpal, I believe is his name. Um, from Talon. Obviously he worked for Vishkar and he worked alongside with uh, Symmetra. He has one attack, six defense, one health. And he has Hostile Takeover. After another Talon character on your side KOs an enemy back row character, turn one of the enemy's face-up locations face down. So the idea is that, you know, when they take them out, you take over their location. So you can basically, you know, take uh, every time you KO a back row character with a Talon character, you're going to be able to continue to uh, devastate your opponent's uh, resource row. So you're going to be able to take away locations from them, which is another big mechanic behind Talon. So Talon's all about removing enemy locations and ramping up those cards to bring them out onto your side. So, um, so pretty powerful card, Sanjay Corpal. Next, we're, we'll go to the Doomfist supporting character card. Um, I still have to kind of fix with the picture here. 
Um, Doomfist is 7-2 with Ferocious. Um, so I, I decided instead of aggressive, give him Ferocious. Um, you know, within you know within this within this light. Um, very similar to like you know um, what you might call it, uh, Beast and Black Panther, Will Spain, right? Uh, mostly the ferocious characters have two health and a low defense pool, but a high attack pool. So seven attack out of five of drop, it's pretty good. He has uppercut main. He gets a fist, right? You gotta get the might. Doomfist has flight and plus three plus zero the next time he attacks this turn. So he can go into the back row, attack the back row. Like Sanjay wants him to, right? KO characters in that back row to remove vocations from that character. Uh, so Sanjay, I think, is going to become like a very big target um, once you kind of um, kind of get you know kind of the handle of this. So one six, pretty good, um, that sort of thing. I might also have him like maybe um, have another keyword power that maybe he gains defense. Maybe I'll give him like a low attack, uh, low defense pool, but he gains plus one defense for each face of location in your resource row. So like he he's like all about control over uh, territory and, and other areas. So maybe, you know, some fun things, some fun ideas to think about. Now let's go on to six drop. Six drop Talon. Uh, one guy that we have not seen yet, but came out last year is Sigma. So Sigma is Talon, um, he has Flight, he has 5 Attack, 8 Defense with 1 Health, he has Gravitic Flux, during the main phase you can pay 2 Intellect, so if you notice there's not a lot of Intellect of superpowers in this game, the thing is that 2 Intellect exhaust each enemy character and place 2 minus and minus on counters on them, they can't ready until after your next turn. So very powerful ability um but you're paying two yellows for it and so like obviously if you have other characters on the opponent's side um that would definitely be devastated by two minus and minus ones like doomfist or anyone with ferocious and things like that they can be stunned any little characters things like that um but yeah pretty powerful ability um and uh, there's a lot of abilities in this card set that stop characters from readying on their next turn and then giving pounce and things like that so there's just a few things to be kind of concerned about that that i still have to work out um but yeah so that's sigma um you know let's move on to seven we'll do our we'll do our seven drops before we head out i have more cards but just to keep the video short so let's go on to um, Widowmaker first. So Widowmaker is a uh, seven drop. She has range, 10 attack, two defense with one health. So a very aggressive sort of team as you're kind of noticing. She has grappling hook. So during the build phase, pay a red. Widowmaker has climb and quick draw this turn. And she also has sniper. So very similar to her, le her level two, but her stats are a little bit more powerful on the attack end. Um, and uh yeah so that's basically widowmaker so she can attack your back row character she can become an 11-3 and can't even be range attacked back um yeah so pretty powerful stuff with this seven drop you guys can let me know what you guys think about it if i need to up the defense at all or anything like that but we'll uh yeah we'll continue to take a look at that sucker and then finally our last one that we're going to discuss for today is talon heavy assault um, I can't find any animated artwork, so I took whatever I could from the Retribution um, Archives event. But the uh, Talon Heavy Assault has range. They have 8 attack, 6 defense, they have 2 health, and they have a charge ability. During the main phase, you can pay a green, if, or a might. If Talon Heavy Assault is in your back row, move them to your front row. If you move Talon Assault this way, Talon Heavy Assault this way, uh, I might have to change the pronunciation there. Sorry, the uh, capitalization there. They get plus three, plus three the next time they attack this turn. So basically, they become an 11-9. All right, so you pay a green, they go up to the front row, they become an 11-9. Um, I might you know tweak around with this a little bit. I might make them an 8-8 eight, eight, um, and then be able to get that ability to become an 11-11. 
But, you know, that may not be as powerful, so maybe I'll, I'll see what I can do about that. And then they have two, uh, two health. So, um, yeah, pretty powerful stuff um, at that. So, yeah, the seven drops have range. If you notice with the Overwatch ones, they don't have range. So, um, Talon, pretty powerful, pretty big, um, pretty big team. Let me know what you guys think about those cards. Um, I want to make sure to retain the flavor of them, make sure they go along with a few of those things um, that we've kind of seen. Um, I also have a few equipment cards that I will um, show in my next spoiler sort of thing. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and have a great rest of your day. Stay frosty.